Hi guys, Rumbo15 here. Today I'll be reviewing the ne uh, next episodes of Batwoman, Flash, Supergirl, and the first episode of Arrow, Season 8. Um, so yeah. But just quickly, Crisis on Infinite Earth stuff. Uh, the Anti-Monitors look has been revealed, uh, which looks pretty cool. Very comic book accurate as well. And very different from the monitor's look. And Pryor's, Pryor's look has been revealed as well. And the Australian um, Harrison Wells has been seen on set for Crisis. And so has uh, the actress who plays the daughter of Oliver Queen. Uh, so Mia Smoke, uh, Batwoman was on set, Supergirl, Flash, Oliver obviously, John Constantine I think as well. And the Atom as well, uh, Ray Palmer. And Titans is officially going to be in Crisis on Infinite Earth. So they're only going to have like 30 seconds or so. Um, it's also, yeah, so they're apparently Earth 9. They're starting with Arrow Season 8. Excellent episode. I'd say the best episode of Arrow ever, I'd say, so far. But yeah, the future stuff was okay. I know lots of people will hate it, but I, I thought it was okay. And de the Deathstroke gang in it is quite cool. Um, so yeah, that, that that future stuff was okay. But the rest of the episode was better. Really interesting to see... Yeah. Um, just the other... How, how different it is. Um... And it was so similar to episode one and the whole of season one as well, so that was pretty cool. Tommy's back, uh, Renee and Diana are in it, even though they're evil, and and Tommy Merlin turns out to be the Dark Archer, which was really cool as well. And it turns out that Thea's dead, and that's Tommy's motivation, which is quite interesting. Oliver's dead as well, because this is set on off too. Um, so obviously you've got Black Siren stash. Black, she's now, uh, Laurel's now Black Canary, so that's sort of them. And she's working with Adrian Chase, who's the Hood slash Green Arrow of Earth 2. But originally it was Robert Queen, but I think they've wrecked on that or something. And Malcolm, Malcolm shows up in it as well, and so does Moira as well. And it's just a really good episode of lot, a lot of Easter eggs for episode, the pilot episode and season 1 in general. And Tommy's basically yeah, got Malcolm's plan, he's the Dark Archer, and he's doing the Undertaking and all that. So he steals Dwarf Star stuff. And it turns out the Monitor sent Oliver uh, to find that uh, Dwarf Star thing. I, I sent him there for a mission to collect it. Started on Lee and Yu, which was pretty cool. Uh, a lot of vibes to Season 1. And I kind of wish we used to see more of it, but the sh the uh, and also John Diggle from Earth One shows up. I mentioned Felicity a couple times. They say on Earth Two that she's running smoke tech. So yeah, and but the shock at the end where Earth Two gets completely destroyed by antimatter, antimatter wave. That's just, what a shock. And so the whole of Earth Two now has been destroyed. So that includes. Harry from Earth 2, Jesse Quick is now gone as well, um, Gorilla City, um, the Moira, the Tommy, the Malcolm from Earth 2 as well, Adrian Chase, also I really like the new suits as well this season, this season. the suits look cool. Also apparently this will be the only episode with, with uh, Team Arrow going to the multiverse, the rest of the episodes are set on Earth 1. And Thea is meant to be in a few of them. So episode 3 is going to be set in present day. And Thea is meant to be in a couple of other episodes as well. To the flag. Barry's plan is to just time travel. Because that's pretty much what he does now. Um, so he tries tra traveling, time traveling to the future. To to see. Uh, to go to the day after. He's disappeared just to see what's happened. And then he gets injured with antimatter. Oh, but uh, yeah. So then he goes to R3 for help with. J. Garrick's help, and it turns out that um, J. Garrick's girlfriend on Earth two on Earth three is as well 
it looks like Barry's mum, so that was interesting. Uh, Jay explains that there is a crisis coming or something like that, that that antimatter is coming. He sees multiple, yeah, multiple events, and it does look really cool because we get to see everyone up disappearing, and we also get to see him die just like in the Crisis comics, and it looks exactly like as it does in the comics. Probably get a better version of it in there. Most of the episode Barry's out of it. The rest of the episode wasn't so interesting. The girl in it wasn't it wasn't an interesting character. The story wasn't that intriguing. Frost is just so annoying really. It's quite annoying. The blood work stuff wasn't that intriguing and it was just barely in it. Barely in it. I know it was just really interesting to see Jay Garrick, Joan Garrick, Joan Garrick uh, interacting with Barry and Ice. A good setup for Crisis. The rest of the episode wasn't so intriguing. There was a th I mean, and it was extremely predictable that it was going to be, um, it was going to be that that other person she was fighting with um, as the villain. So, um, yeah, the new suit also looks quite cool. But overall, it was an okay episode. Good setup for Crisis. Good to see Jay out back again. Uh, he might. I think he is in Crisis on Infinite Earths. Uh, either that or, or he'll be playing his Earth-90 Flash. I'm pretty sure he's going to be playing Jay Garrick though, so. He'll be back for Crisis. But overall, it's an okay episode, but, yeah. Also now, the girl uh, has joined um, Iris's newspaper team or whatever, so. But anyway, that's about it, really. Moving on into Supergirl. <sighs> well, let's put, it was better than last, it was better than last time. Oh yeah, sorry, Arrow rating. Arrow rating, 10 out of 10 for Arrow. So it won. Flash this week, I'd say, was 7.5 out of 10 for this week. And then Supergirl. I mean, the Martian Manhunter stuff was quite good. Um, and the whole going into his reign and his memories being tampered with, that was quite cool. Um... The Lena Luthor stuff was absolute garbage. That was really boring. And it, it really like they are setting up the British guy to... And Kara, they're clearly going to have something at some point. Kara is so annoying. Also, Ego is so annoying. But Supergirl is actually... Quite, I don't know. It's, it's not as good as it. Yeah, it's just not... It wasn't a very good episode in my opinion. James... Olsen did practically, but pretty much nothing. Um, but uh, Malfrick, uh, John's brother, is in it a lot more. Um, they did two a couple of setups for episode three, and John's healed now, Malfrick's healed, so they'll probably battle that out again. Overall, it was an intriguing episode, but just still pretty crap, really. So, I last time I gave it a 4.5, so I'd say maybe. 5.5 out of 10 this week. And last but not least is Batwoman. Which I'd say they crammed so much into this. Like, because they had already revealed that Alice was Beth. And now they've released that to the public now, I'm pretty sure. But it was, I'd actually say it was a great episode of Batwoman. I'd say episode 1 was slightly better. Uh, what did I give episode one that was seven point five, didn't I? Yeah, I'd say this one was still pretty good. The suit looks a lot better this week, so it seems like they alter altered it. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say. I mean, the characters are quite good. Uh, there's less awkward moments in it, which was quite good, but a lot of betrayal and the flashbacks were absolutely terrible. I don't like the flashbacks at all. Um, but their motivations and things was quite good. It was a pretty good episode. Um, but hopefully she'll get her proper suit and hair and everything soon. Uh, it was a, it was a pretty solid episode though. Um, and now everyone knows that an Alice escaped at the end, even though she got captured by the police, but she escaped now in the wind. So yeah. And also there's a new, there's another villain, which is... Um, Kate's stepmom as well is now uh, a, kind of a master mind behind it all, or she's going to be another villain, which is quite intriguing. 
so that could be quite good. Um, overall, quite a good episode, but yeah, not great. So overall, I'd say it wasn't as good as The Flash this week, so I'd say 7 out of 10. Also, just in regards to uh, Marvel quickly, Ant-Man 3 is happening. It's been announced officially. Uh, there was rumours it might not happen, but yeah, it is happening. Hopefully Black Ant will be the villain. If not an, a good Ant-Man villain, and a, also probably most likely Scott Lang's daughter will become stature in it as well because of the time jump in Avengers Endgame. So the movie won't be coming out till 2022. Also, uh, some concept art or something that, uh, that has been revealed for the Arrow spin-off, Green Arrow and the Canaries. Mia Smoke as Green Arrow, which I think is a good idea. Now, I know a lot of people, including Paigey, who I mainly watch, uh, who's a good YouTuber, subscribe to him. He covers everything DC TV. It's definitely worth checking out. Um, but yeah. He doesn't like it. Lots of people don't like it. But I think this, this spin-off is a good idea. Uh, I do like the character of Mia. Uh, I think it's so, very similar to Oliver. And I think her taking up the mantle of Green Arrow is good. And Dino and Laurel are going to be in it as well. And they're going to be the Canaries. Uh, so yeah. Probably most likely John Diggle and Rene Ramirez might show up in the series as well. But it's set in present day. So that should be quite cool. Also, Grant Wilson is meant to show up in Arrow season eight, apparently in one of the episodes. But I think I think it might be episode nine, which is the backdoor pilot to the Green Arrow Canaries spin-off series. Also, in regards to the Batman movie coming in in twenty twenty one, Zoe Kravitz has been announced as Catwoman, who she played. Uh, she was in X Men First Class and played Angel. And she play she played Little Strange in Fantastic Beasts, and she's shown up in Divergent and lots of other movies. So she seems like a good fit for uh, Catwoman, and apparently her and Robert Pattinson have good chemistry together, so that should be good. So yeah, her as Catwoman sounds good, and also Paul Paul Dano her is also be. Also, we'll be playing the Riddler. Uh, seems like a good choice. Could be interesting. Personally, I would have gone for David Tennant, but maybe he'll play. Maybe David Tennant will play a better Two Face, or Matt Smith. I don't know. But yeah, David Tennant would, should definitely be a Batman villain. Maybe Two Face would be quite good, and who knows who could play the Mad Hatter, who's apparently meant to be in it as well, and so is the Penguin as well. But I'm sure we'll get more casting for the Batman soon. She's coming out in 2021, but so far we know Zoe Kravodas is going to be playing Catwoman, Paul Dano is going to be playing the Riddler, and obviously we know Robert Pattinson is playing the Batman. Also in regards to Crisis on Earth news, the Spectre will be in in Crisis as well. Uh, he's going to be played by Stephen Loeb. Spectre being in Crisis, he does play a big role in Crisis on Earth in the comics, so that makes sense. And there'll probably be more casting for DC stuff, Crisis, DCU stuff, and I'll cover all that, and Marvel as well. Also, as you guys saw at the beginning of, it, of the video, I have released a new poster for Doctor Who Season 1, coming out this November. I promise you there will be a full-length trailer coming soon, either on Halloween or early November. The first episode won't actually air till like halfway through November or something. Um, but yeah, I promise you there will be a trailer soon. And also a third poster as well, so there'll be three posters all together. So if I don't release a trailer on Halloween, I'll release a new poster instead. Also on Halloween, there'll also be a Harry Potter sketch type thing as well, which will be set around Harry Potter 4. Um, so yeah. And in regards to Lego Doctor Who, episode 4 will be coming out at half term. Episode five will be coming out a week after. I've just not I've not been really f filming on Lego Doctor Who because I've been busy with other stuff and things, and yeah, so that's why Lego Doctor Who has been delayed a bit. But yeah, episode four will be coming out at half time. But there will be a Halloween Lego Doctor Who Halloween mini-sode. 